Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Property Subcommittee at Staffordshire County Council today, Wednesday, the 7th of September 2022. Uh, first item on the agenda is apologies. Good afternoon, Chairman. I've received apologies from Councillor Parry and Councillor Philip White. Thank you. Second item is declarations of interest. Uh, members of the committee, do I have any declarations of interest? For the record, nobody is indicating. Third item on the agenda is minutes of the meeting held on the 6th of July 2022. Can have those uh, approved as a correct record of the meeting. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Deville. Um, the second item is the, um, property sub the special property subcommittee that took place on the 26th of August. And thank you to Councillor Deville and Councillor Price for making yourself available for that whilst I was on holiday. Uh, could I have that as a correct record of the meeting? Uh, for the record, Councillor Deville and Councillor Price are in, uh, acknowledging those as a correct record. Uh, agenda item number five is proposed leases to academies. Uh, Councillor Deville, uh, if you'd like to lead us off on this, please. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, regular item of business, Chairman. This is Motor County Primary School, St John's Lane in Walsall, which is part of the Great Worley elect Electoral um, Division. Um, the expectation of the Department of Education is that we, as Staffordshire County Council, um, grant an academy lease in the standard format. Um, it's worth bearing in mind, Chairman, that um, these items, fairly regular items, do um, contribute to our priority outcomes as a council, uh, and the three um, priority outcomes that, um, that, that these contribute to is to able access um, to more good jobs, um, to be um, to, to be more to help people to be more independent, and indeed to help children gain in their learning and to feel safe and happier uh, and supported in their environment, Chairman. I think uh, if I may bring Jason in, if there's anything to add, Jason, to this proposal, please, this recommendation. Yeah, Mr Chairman, um, in the scheme of the conversions, this one was very straightforward, um, no issues, uh, so uh, a standard 125-year lease uh, is proposed. Okay, before I open up to the committee, uh, finance, any comments? No comments, Chairman. Uh, no comments, Chairman. Mr Turner. Uh, no comments for me, thank you. Uh, we've got two lo local members in this case, uh, Councillor Williams and Councillor Parry. Any comments from them? No comments received. Thank you. Uh, members of the committee, uh, in particular, obviously, Councillor Price um, involves academisation, which is your portfolio, obviously. Um, do, you, do any members of the committee have any comments or observations about the proposal, uh, Councillor Price? Yeah, it's probably a really daft question. Why 125 years? Um, well, that, that's the standard lease for um, all academy transfers. It's a typical for a long-term uh, transfer, 60, 100, 125 years. Sometimes you get 500 years. But these are essentially on the the uh, requirements set out for the DFE. Um, what I should point out is, if the site ceases to be used for a school, then the, the lease will end at that point. So the use is particularly tied to the period as well. Thank you. Legal? No, Ian's already clarified what I was going to say, so thank you. Okay, any other comments? Could you give us a recommendation, please, Councillor Deville? Indeed, indeed. Chairman, the recommendation is that lease of the site set out in the schedule in the standard format be approved. For the record, that's unanimous. Uh, thank you. Moving on then to agenda item number six, which is disposal of surplus property at the Newlands Royal Walk Cheadle. Councillor Deville. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the property uh, has been used as a residential home for disabled persons. It's extremely close to Cheadle Town Centre and it's adjacent to the hospital building and also adjacent to Bishop Royal Primary School. It's an area that I know very well uh, and I know also, Chairman, that the building has become uneconomic to upgrade uh, to modern requirements. 
and therefore clearly um, is unsustainable. Um, by remaining in the county council ownership, um, I'm afraid the Newlands will only incur further ongoing costs. Discussions have taken place with the NHS with regard to the adjacent Cheadle Hospital and also to Bishop Rawl Primary School to see if the Newlands site could help develop the area in the big picture. Um, both NHS and Bishop Rawl Primary School have said that they weren't interested in, uh, in acquiring um, the building. Um, I think that the, this proposal um, to sell the Newlands will be beneficial to the big picture of Cheadle, um, the Cheadle Town Plan, and will be, um, will be um, positive in the development of Cheadle Town Centre, Chairman. Um, I'd ask um, Peter if he has any other um, background details or any other information, Peter, that you'd like to um, present, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, nothing really much to add. Uh, it's, it's a site which we feel will go well at auction, either as an existing building or as a redevelopment. We think in value terms it's finely balanced between the two. Uh, at the moment, it is a deteriorating asset and we don't really want to be in a position where it's detracting from the area. Uh, but it, it would cost a huge amount of money to bring it up to modern standards for the type of uses that we would be looking to use that for. Thank you. Um, finance? Um, nothing to add to uh, the information in the report, Chairman. Legal? Uh, thank you, Chairman. So just a couple of uh, clarifications on the actual recommendations itself. So one will be a bit, sorry, in reserve if it does meet the 200K and the second part of the recommendation, if the highest bidder falls away, what is the intention there? Is it the intention that the lower bidder, if they offer less than 200K, would you still be proceeding with that? I think just the recommendation needs to make it clear on that. Mr. Turner. Uh, so uh, we put this recommendation in basically because we, we had this issue in the past, so it's just to cover it off. Um, I think if it comes in at less than than 200,000, I mean, there's two points to note. Firstly is it would become under an officer delegation at that point in any case. Um, but if we do get into that situation, we, we'll review it and, uh, and bring it back to you if we think it's an issue. What we're talking about here is we expect it to be over 200,000. That's our reserve price. Our experiences of auctions is they normally go reasonably well above the reserve price. Um, so this is under the circumstance that we are over 200,000 and it is just unusually that the highest bidder falls away. Um, I would just like to remind the committee that, um, forgive me if, you, if you've sort of already picked this up, but this, when we go to auction, this is the decision now, apart from it being over that reserve price of 200,000 pounds, when the hammer falls, we will be in contract rather than bringing it back at a later date. Most of the time, when you agree to sales, you know the exact figure because we've gone through a, uh, an informal tender process. Thank you. I just remind the committee that we are in a public meeting. Um, our expectations around how much we will get for this site is uh, somewhere north of 200,000, and that's probably the, the end of the chat, I think, as far as the decision is for this morning. Uh, Councillor Deville, you indicated. It's a point of interest, um, Chairman. Can I ask the rationale behind going to auction and why we don't just market it? Thank you, uh, Councillor. The reason being that we do feel the market is likely to fall away uh, over the winter. Uh, it's an unusual building. It doesn't f fall into an easy category. And we have had some success in the past at auction we felt that this was a suitable property to place to auction as a method of disposal rather than a private treaty. Okay, um, local member, Councillor Deville, any comments to add to those you've already made? I did um, make um, my um, comment to Zach, uh, 
chairman uh, but they are um, as I've stated really that I do feel that ultimately it's an area that's in need of redevelopment uh, regeneration and will indeed be positive to the big picture of Cheadle Town Centre thank you chairman uh, Four members of the committee, and myself really, and John, um, Councillor Price now, because you've said your piece, Councillor Deville. Uh, have you anything to add? I know I fully support this, and I fully support Councillor Deville. Don't we all? Uh, Councillor Deville, could you give us the recommendations, please? Indeed, Chairman, yes, thank you. The recommendation is that the sub subcommittee is to approve the sale of the Newlands in Royal Walk, Cheadle, SD 10 for EL, by public auction to the highest bidder for a sum in excess of £200,000. And should the purchase to the highest bidder fall through, the Assistant Director for Commercial and Assets be given delegated approval to agree best terms available with the next succeeding bidder or bidders. Thank you, Chairman. You've heard the recommendations. Those in favour? For the record, that's unanimous. Agenda item number seven is Hagleyfield Rugeley proposed lease. I was intrigued by the pronunciation of Rugeley. Depends where you come from in the county. Sometimes it's Rugeley, other times it's Rugeley. But um, let's see how uh, Councillor Deville goes with that. Well, I think people in, who live in Rugeley tend to call it Rugeley. So not living in Rugeley, I call it Rugeley. And this former youth centre chairman ceased operation in 2015. A large area of the field, I remember it very, very well, was used for the Rugeley Flood Alleviation Scheme, which was a great um, partnership um, development scheme. Um, since 2019, officers have tried um, to achieve good use for these fields, these facilities, unfortunately with no success. But with discussions with the rugby club representatives, these have resulted in a proposal to form the Hagley Community Sports Association if the land indeed um, is leased. So I wish them luck uh, and I'm really happy to bring this proposal today. Um, I, and more importantly the local community, really wish to see these facilities in operation once again. Um, facilities that will um, enable us to um, benefits of healthy living, sport, leisure. Really pleased to bring these proposals today, Chairman. Lee, please, Lee Wells. Yeah, I think you prob probably covered most of what I would have said. So yes, I mean, we've worked hard since 2019 to try and get an anchor tenant essentially to take this asset on, to run and manage it locally. Um, it's very difficult for us as an organisation to do that. We have no representatives on site. The former youth centre has been disposed to a local church community group. That's been you know, doing really well. Um, the, the other part of the site is a play area and the other part of the site is a bowling club. Um, the proposal here, because the land is essentially a, a flood alleviation scheme, a flood, uh, flood embankment and, and dam structure, it does significantly restrict any potential use for it in the future. Um, there's no real developable potential on that site whatsoever. It is designated as local playing fields and pitches. Um, so this is a, a really good outcome, I think, to, to get the, the pitches back on site, get them operational. It's a mixture of um, um, rugby clubs and football clubs that are engaging to form this, uh, this charity group. They will then be um, asked to provide annual information to us about just what they're delivering on site. Um, as part of the, the, the lease obligation. So we will be keeping an eye on it to make sure that they are actually delivering for the local people and the local community and the wider teams, not just their own. Because one, one of the specifics we sort of said is we didn't want them just sticking to their own teams. It's important that they bring other teams on board and it's, it's a wider use and activity. The town council are involved. They're very happy with it. I've spoke to the leader, leader of the, uh, the district uh, council. Um, they phoned me and, and they're very happy with the outcome of this, as is as is the, the two local councillors. They're both really pleased by the outcome um, to actually get these fields back in use. Yep. Thank you. Um, interesting to describe as an undervalued transaction, given the fact that it can't be used for anything else, but it is an undervalued transaction. Um, finance. Just one uh, question, if I may, Chair, around the um, 
the works, the groundworks, that uh, the report refers to as being deferred and delayed, is there an outstanding liability here for any further groundworks? And if so, whose liability would that be? Yeah, no, there's no, the, the deferred works have been done. So the Environment Agency did the majority of the work on site and there were some reinstatement aspects that took a lot longer to deliver. Um, essentially, the, the work that they did to bring it back into playing fields was actually pretty poor, pretty poor condition. So that we, are, they, we, we, we deferred accepting the site back until all those works had been done, but it took a lot longer than we thought to do that. Yeah. Legal. Uh, thank you, Chairman. So, uh, just a few uh, comments, if I may. In terms, of, in terms of the charity name, is that actually settled now? Because sometimes what happens is by the time they get, you know, go to kind of setting it up, the name can actually change slightly. So it might be worthwhile in the recommendation delegating it to Ian to give that flexibility rather than having to come back to property subcommittee. The other point was the 15-year term, where that would be long enough. Uh, I note in the papers they looking to obtain funding from elsewhere and some of the grant funding requirements are usually 20 to 25 years it's just whether that's been taken into account and the final point was on page 28 they set out their uh, budget illustration I think in year three they're looking at uh, you know being in credit you know in, in profit by about 48,000 pounds it's what's to happen with that additional income they're looking to potentially generate, bed in mind that we're looking to uh, rent at a peppercorn at one pound per annum. Do we need any obligations on them to kind of spend that money in a particular way? Thank you. Yes, yeah, so exactly. So you, you're quite right. They're all valid points. And I raised the same points that you're referring to in terms of the term. So I think we do need to go back to them, and I will go back to them just to make sure that those terms, they, they suggested the 15 years. I actually indicate the same as you that felt it might be more like 20 or 25, but they felt that 15 was suitable for them to get the funding that they needed. But we can clarify that definitely. Uh, in terms of the charity, they will set the charity up once they get the kind of approval to sort of proceed on this um, and yes we'll make sure that it is a body that is able to take that agreement and, and in, in party and enter those lease agreements uh, and then uh, the latter one about the funding yes I um, mean the, uh, the 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 purpose around the annual reports is exactly that to make sure that we are involved as a county council going forward and that those funds are to be reinvested into the facilities on site and to keep providing those football teams and youth clubs to, to continue to operate on site Absolutely, yeah. Great questions, though. And um, I think uh, raises a couple of points which I just think we ought to include in the recommendation, which is to delegate to the assistant director the ability to have some flexibility on the name because Hagley's a fairly common name. Uh, so when they go to register with the Charity Commission, it might be that Hagley Community Sports Association already exists somewhere else in the West Midlands, so it'll be Hagley Community Sports, brackets, Rouge League Association or something like that. And we don't want to have to go to all the fuss of having to assign the lease um, as a consequence of the name change. And I think also delegating to the AD uh, the flexibility about the lease term as they start to approach the reality of trying to raise funding. Uh, our advice has, has so far not been received in a way that has meant they're asking for it. Because 25 years, if you're, if you're chairing a community sports association and thinking to yourself, blimey, that's a long commitment. Um, but when they go to go get finance, they might find that 25 years is the appropriate length of time. So colleagues on the committee, I, I, I will be proposing uh, an addition to the recommendations to give the assistant director flexibility, which segues neatly into the assistant director. Any comments? Uh, no comments from me. Uh, it's a good proposal. Thank you. Um, uh, local member is uh, Councillor Peter Chris Konchik. Nailed the name. Uh, yes, he has sent me an email. So in respect to the proposal for Hagley Field, myself and Councillor Sutherland had a meeting with Lee Wells on the 22nd of August to discuss and gain further clarification on the proposal. Councillor Sutherland has previously had some dialogue with the Rugeley Town Council regarding this matter, hence the reason I requested him to attend the meeting with me. After the discussion, we both decided to give our full support to the proposal. We see the proposed agreement with Hagley Community Sports Association will put the field to good use and only benefit the area and community. Thank you. Um, members of the committee, any discussion? Um, Councillor Price. Just a comment. I mean, I'm really keen to see any community group come forward and put a scheme in place. Uh, in, and as mentioned as well in the paperwork, it is an extremely well thought out scheme. If it has the full support of the local members, 
and the town council and the district council carry a lot of weight as well around things like this, uh, then, then, it, then it, it, it's a good thing, so I fully support it. Councillor Deville? Yes, I'd agree totally, Councillor Price. I mean, anything that encourages good, healthy activity and healthy living, um, I think we should support it, and it's a, a really good item to bring today, I think, Chairman. Uh, thank you. So um, I'll, I'll go with the recommendation because there's an amendment to the recommendation. Okay. Uh, first, recommend <coughs> first recommendation is to enter a 15-year lease agreement with Hagley Community Sports Association for the operation and management of local community facilities, uh, facilities and sports activities on Hagley Field. Uh, the additional recommendation is to delegate to the Assistant Director um, the negotiation on the, on the precise name of the entity and the duration of the lease uh, lease term to be agreed. Does that sound about right, Mr. Tradewell? Yeah, he's nodding for the record. Uh, all those in favour? Uh, that is unanimous. Right, next item is, just bear with me a second, could I get back to my agenda, um, is uh, half yearly report <coughs> on the activity of County Farms Tenancies Panel which I think we're back again with um, Councillor Deville, aren't we? No, Daryl Ayres. Who's going to Who's going to be leading on this one? Is it uh, Is it you, Mr. Turner? Or Richard? Are you doing it? Far away. sitting so in effect it's a uh, it's a nil activity report okay uh, what's the reason why the panel hasn't sat there haven't been any re relettings to interview candidates for okay we have we have done well we have done two recently and we're doing another one tomorrow so it's timing fine um, I, I've said this to you before uh, but in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, and you're the one with the one eye, because this committee used to have quite a lot of farmers on it, and it now doesn't. Um, so uh, we rely on you quite heavily to give us precise advice on this subject. Um, so um, th I don't think there's much further to add to it, is there, uh, other if, than what I've just said? The, ne the next report does is on a similar vein, and I can, I've got some explanatory notes with that to give committee members a better picture okay it's oh, quite important yeah, because yeah. I, I don't the, the farms are a big asset in the county and it is important that we keep a, a pretty tight uh, close eye on them uh, and um, it's important that these reports come forward I appreciate this is an ill activity report I look forward to the next uh, report presumably coming around February time I would guess something like that for this second in half in of the, the year, year. Yep. yeah um, so we can uh, interrogate the uh, the letting activity. Any comments, colleagues, from the committee? No. Thank you very much indeed. Um, moving on then to the next item, which is exclusion of the public. I move that the public be excluded from the meeting for the following items of business which involve the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in, parag in the paragraphs of Part 1 of Schedule 12A as amended of the Local Government Act 1972 as indicated below. It's moved. <coughs> 